Hello, my name's John. These are some Malstrain gene stealers from Necromunda Hive Secundus, and you're watching War Games Models and Other Hobbies. Hello, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be putting together one of the Malstrain gene stealers from Necromunda Hive Secundus. I want to have a look at what these models look like. Compare them to the new Tyranid Gene Stealer as well, so we can see the comparison. So I've got here the sprue that has the Gene Stealers and Tyramites. I might build one of those as well. They're the little weird floating brains. Now I've recently done an unboxing of Hive Secundus and when I unboxed it, I wasn't too sure whether it was worth it or not. And I've realised, since starting to read the manual, having a look at the lore behind it, which I'm really quite enjoying, seeing that the rules are very similar to Necromunda, if not the same, it's just the scenarios that are different and the way that gangs are chosen, I think it is really worth it. It's a good price for... The kind of the models you get if you want something quite unique to play it is a good option to go with if you want to start out with necromunda but similar to um hive war that's a good option as well but anyway which one do i want to make well i do like the squiddy faces so i'm going to go for malstrain gene stealer number three for this one so let's go through I'm going to zoom on in so we can see this a little bit more detail. So first things first, I'm looking for part 27 and part 28. So with these kits, there is um, head options for the gene stealers and three different bodies. I'm going to make one sprue up over the next little bit of time, which will give me the option to kind of see exactly how these all go together and whether I can do a few conversions on these. So while I trim the parts, let me zoom out a bit so we can see the whole page. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to trim the parts out and I'm going to lay them on the instructions. Not something that I've done before, but I'm going to see how it kind of goes together that way. don't know why I'm doing that this way. I've never done it before, but if it works, I might do it more often. But I can get all the parts together. But anyway, the rule book for Hive Secundus I've started reading it, looking at the lore and looking at the way that gangs are made. The normal kind of gangs, yep, yeah, work fine. They're exactly the same. But the way that the Gene Stealer gangs work is slightly different. If you want me to do a video on that, on making a gang, please drop a comment. I'd be happy to do so. But right now, I really fancied making some of the models and out of all of them in the set the gene stealers are the only ones that don't actually have specific options for weaponry and things like that so i kind of went well actually i can make these without worrying about making the wrong weapons and regretting how I put it together. Because that's one thing with all of these kits. There are options for weapons and how you want to put it together. So you don't necessarily want to rush straight in. I have in the past just built straight out of the box with the instructions what the, um, the game suggested um, what word am I looking for? The suggested models, how to put them together. And then once I've done that, I realised that I've got plenty of options that I've now missed out on. So that's why I now take a little bit of time, think about it, 
and then put the things together. And right now, ah, there it is. That doesn't look the same. That part seven does not look like that. Yeah, that does not look the same. Okay, let's have a... That... That's seven there. Ah, uh, no, my mistake. That seven is referring to that part there. Okay. So, let's carry on. 26 and 29. So, what was I saying? Yeah, so, I now like to think a little bit about how I want to put them together. So, I will do a video on making a Van Saar gang for Hive Secundus with the Spira Hunter. You get two of them in the box set, which is quite good. I thought you only got one, so that's quite a useful kind of thing. Leave the heads for now, so let's start putting this together. So yeah, it's, I do like Van Saar's, and be quite nice to put a gang together. And there is hopefully not too long a wait for the source book to come out for Hive Secundus. So generally with Necromunda they release a um, source book with further expanded rules. It might even be a series of them because they've done that as well. And yes it's not always for everyone when you have all of the different books but I do like the Necromunda source books it really builds the um, background of Necromunda and yeah, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't my favourite game. I do have another game that if I had the choice over Necromunda I probably would go for that and that's Mordheim which unfortunately isn't available anymore but you can still play it the rules are available online and I am in the not too distant future going to be making some videos on Mordheim so stay tuned for those I've got an idea for a full series of videos on that that's not going to be for a little while okay that's the first time let's zoom in while I start putting these together so we can see them in a little bit more detail. Let me just move things to one side. Right, so there's the first hand. So yeah, these Malstrain Gene Stealers, I'm gonna look forward to seeing a lot of people's conversions of these. I may try some myself, as there's quite a few head varieties. I want to see how compatible they are with the Tyranid Gene Stealer kit. I mean, looking at these, they do actually look a little bit bigger than the Tyranid Gene Stealers, and the story behind them being genetically modified and trapped in the underhells of Hive Secundus. They're kind of they're something very different. And I kind of like the idea of the way that the story's gone, that they're a completely separate item now from um, the Tyranids. They're kind of... They've become... something that the Tyranids don't want to kind of reabsorb into them. And that's the kind of... that's the backstory that I'm kind of picking up with it. So I could imagine there's going to be some quite interesting games and things like that where you've got Gene Stealer cults versus Malstrain cults. But these are abominations. But yeah, by reading the source book at the beginning of 
the source material, so at the beginning of the rule book, I think this is going to be quite an interesting campaign setting. Certainly different from previous campaigns. Oh, where's this one? That one goes. It's like it's passing something behind him, this one. But yeah, these are all quite nice and spiny. Unusual models, these ones. They don't have necessarily the standard number of arms. Some of them, I think. Or they've got different arms all around. There's Just be patient with that and hold that for a little bit. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to getting some paint on these because as the source material goes their colour isn't necessarily in the style of a high fleet or anything like that or the Gene Stealer cults. It, it's down to how they've kind of been irradiated and things like that. So I may think about trying some glowing Mal Strange Gene Stealers or some really kind of unique colour schemes. Uh, as you get six in the box set and then with the heads of others it's going to be possible to do some conversions. I'm really looking forward to actually trying some conversions. What would be interesting is to see how much Games Workshop sells these for when they release a individual box set. One thing I have noticed actually is I got my set from a secondary retailer and already they are out of stock. So I'm wondering if Games Workshop only had a limited stock for the other retailers because you can only, looks like, get it from the Warhammer store now. So it's that price tag of £105, which is quite a bit. But it's the way of things at the moment, isn't it? So these almost look like they're kind of tree-like with their spines and things like that. Well, I've got to choose a head, but I'm going to put it on a base. Now these are on 40mm bases, so they are on bigger bases than the Tyranid Gene Stealers, which I think are on, I want to say 32 or... 38, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure if you know you can correct me in the comments. Uh, let's put that. Right, head choices. I want to go for the tentacle head, so let's find... There we go, there is the tentacle head. I am thinking that this could be a great conversion on a model as well. Okay, let's... How does this go on there? Okay, that's just gonna go into there. So let's get some glue on there. Gonna stick in place there. Okay, so there is my foot. Whoop. Let's be more patient with that plastic weld on 
the feet. Right, I'm going to put that to one side and let it dry for a bit. And what I'm going to do is have a look at one of these Malstrain Tyramites. So let's just put the first one together. So I need 34 and 36. 34 and 36. So I haven't read what these are yet. I know they're exotic beasts and that's about oh okay when you're making these be careful just got that caught in my nail and it snapped off so I'm gonna have to glue that back on whether that was solely my fault or a fault in the sprue who knows and I want 35, which is this one next to it. And then either 37 or 40, which is the front little twiddly bits. Okay, it's 37 or 40, but they're the same on both of them. So I'm gonna go for 37 on this one. Okay, so first things first. Let's clean this up and let's zoom in a little bit while I do this. Okay, so there's that first half. I'll stick the second half on and then I'll glue that tentacly bit back on. Like I said, I didn't know if that was just me not paying attention or model itself okay. so let's start by putting a bit of glue on there getting this little bit that broke off Rana, stick it in the right place. Okay, I'll let that dry before I clean up that little bit of sprue. But anyway, let's have a look at the next bit there. And another one just broke off. Okay, let's glue that main bit on. If anyone else is making these and has the same problem with those bits breaking off please drop a comment I hope I'm not the only one who's and the other one's broken okay that's a pain okay that is a pain we have the first thing on these models that I don't like. That is either plastic fatigue when you trim them out or just badly put together. This is really gonna be an annoying little piece. Okay, let's hold that in place for a little bit. Oh, this is gonna be a pain. Okay. Let's stick the little face on. Yeah, that, that leg's gonna just move quite a bit okay you know what I'm not going to at the moment stick that to no oh, just 
just move that leg. No, I'm not going to stick that to a flying base at the moment. Let's zoom out. I'm going to leave that to dry. And let me just do my standard. Grab a bit of blue tack. I'm going to stick it up there. And I'm just going to stick that in the blue tack to dry. I'm not going to put it on a flying stem right now. Because those are going to be delicate. I might not make m many of them. Depends how they go in the game. But anyway, let's ignore that pain from that one. I want to do a compare and contrast. So here we have the Malstrain Gene Stealer. I do like the strange look that it's got. And I want to compare it in size to one of the new Tyranid ones. And they're about the same size, they're just put on different base sizes. You can kind of see they've got an origin from a similar path, but yeah. Okay. Right, I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you don't already do so, I'd appreciate it if you followed the channel. If you don't want to do that, just hit like. That's fine by me. If you've got any comments on the video, please chuck them down below as well. Anyway, for now, my name's John. Thanks for tuning in. And you've been watching War Games, Models and other hobbies.